I don't understand the verdict at all. We're exhausted, you know, and we're disappointed. And, uh, you know, I never really had a client quite like Charlie Lynch. And what was the mood of the courtroom like when the verdict was read? It looked pretty somber and surprised to me, but I was so, so shocked myself I wasn't really looking at the courtroom. Tanaka and Guy Iverson sat with Lynch as the clerk read the verdict. Reuven Cohen and John Luttrell, the other two members of the defense team, sat at the same desk. The first count was read, guilty. Luttrell and Cohen each put a hand on Lynch's shoulder. The second count was read, guilty. Lynch closed his eyes tightly. It took several minutes for the clerk to read the verdicts for the five counts. We found Mr. Lynch guilty on all five indictments. And I think the majority of us felt like he was a nice man with um, good intentions who didn't stay within the parameters of the federal law. Under the federal law, we had no choice but to find Mr. Lynch guilty. We wanted a chance to put on more evidence and tell our story um, and felt like it was difficult to do that. Can you talk about if you felt that the jurors uh, were able to hear the whole story? We heard enough to make uh, a decision. I, it's like, it, it's the difference if you don't know what you didn't hear, you don't know you didn't you hear it. You know what I mean? We didn't know what we didn't hear. We heard enough to make a decision on, based on what we did hear. The entrapment by estoppel, how'd you feel about that? Entrapment by estoppel was at the heart of Lynch's defense. Under the strategy, a defendant argues he broke the law because he was given bad advice by a government official. Phone records show that Lynch made four calls to various DEA offices prior to opening his dispensary. He says he asked the DEA what it was going to do about medical marijuana dispensaries and explained he was thinking of opening a dispensary of his own. No one from the DEA answered Lynch's questions until he spoke to a fifth DEA employee who, Lynch says, told him it was, quote, up to the cities and counties to decide how they wanted to handle the matter. Lynch assumed this meant he could operate a dispensary so long as he abided by local law. The prosecution hammered away at the entrapment defense and criticized Lynch for not providing names and titles of the DEA employees who spoke with him. To not put down who he spoke with or what position they held uh, made it difficult for us to believe that uh, there was entrapment by estoppel. Lynch testified that he would not have opened a dispensary if the DEA had told him not to. Do you think that if the DEA agent, if they had said explicitly, do not under any circumstances open a medical marijuana dispensary, do you have any sense of what Charlie would have done with that information? I had the feeling from something he said that he probably would not have, but I don't, we didn't, and we discussed, we did not feel it was the DEA's obligation to tell him since it was already a federal law. Do we know anything about what kind of sentence will be handed down? Most of the charges have mandatory minimum prison terms, but um, whether, you know, there's always exceptions to those, so we're going to, you know, fight as hard as we can to get around them. Um, I think very few people would think that it's fair to put Charlie in prison. Does the jury, do they have any sense of what kind of uh, penalties Lynch faces now? We have absolutely none. Would they th think that it would involve prison time or lots of I have of no idea. Based on just all of the counts and everything, he could conceivably uh, spend the rest of his life in prison. If, you know, if that's what you say, I, we, I have no idea.